all our parents. Actually, if you look, the prophets first always warned their families. All the Anbiya, السلام, they gave da'wah to their families first. So we need to do that. Friends, it's not easy. Actually, now this advice might come as a hard advice, but sometimes you have to leave the friends. Because the Prophet said, Al Maru ala dini khalili. That the man is on the deen of his friends, of his, the people that are around him. If you find yourself that you have, alhamdulillah, guided Islam, but your friends around you are calling you the opposite way, you need to really reassess the relationship because it might cause you harm. And instead of you giving da'wah, they're going to give you da'wah. And you're going to go back. And I've seen that happening too many times. Too many times it happened. That we need to really make a choice. Who do we want? Do we want Allah? Do we want the truth? Do we want God? Or do we want this dunya? Because we know very well the same friends that we trust sometimes are the same ones who have abandoned us many times. Allah will never abandon you. Allah will never abandon you. And on the day of judgment, your friends will not be able to be with you. It will be you and your iman, your heart and your good deeds. So you need to reassess those relationships with the people. Are they pulling you away from Islam? You should tell them. You should talk to them. Tell them about Islam. But don't be like, oh, I'm going. Okay, mom, I'm going for dawah. We're going to watch the game and uh, hang out with some uh, girlfriends. And, you know, the boys are going to drink some beers and I'll have some lemon juice. It's like, you know, you got to be careful. Because you think you're going for dawah. But it might turn up to be a whole different thing. So we need to be careful with this. We need to call them to Islam. We need to tell them. We don't necessarily just have to say, okay, you dirty this and that. No. But you have to call them. But be careful as to where you put yourself in which situation. Alcohol, parties, and change your life. Can you give it up? Can we give it up? Actually, subhanAllah, I remember in the West, Many new Muslims would come to the masjid drunk, man. They were still drinking. You could smell it. I remember the guy is drunk. He's talking to me. He's like, like this, right? And we had, and he, alhamdulillah, the brother and he, who advised him was amazing, yeah? What did he do? Did he say, Arada? No. He used the ayah about the don't come to prayer in the state of being drunk. SubhanAllah. And he slowly, and this was one of the first ayahs that was revealed about alcohol. It wasn't first the haram. No. Slowly to prepare. But people were coming drunk to the masjid. You know, Muslims are drunk because they were alcoholics from before. Right? And it's a big challenge and a big fight. But again, where do you want to go? Can we give up these things? Some people are addicted. Well, you need to go and see a detox center. People need to be careful of these things. Some people are addicted to pornography from before. Some people are addicted to drugs. All these things are addictions. Some people are addicted to women and men. And they need to detox themselves. And one of the best ways to do that, one of the best ways other than the dunya things, going to detox centers, is to dose yourself with some Quran. Listen to the Quran. To fast especially if it's Ramadan or you know to surround yourself with good good friends and good com company to go through a spiritual detox can it happen yes because the Sahabas did it and they were drinking it up like there's no tomorrow and partying it before Islam but they did it because they wanted Islam they understood Islam they understood the truth and they understood that you can die you can die anytime Drink, drunk, dr uh, drunk driving. It happened so much. I remember myself before embracing Islam, and I was looking for Islam at the time. And I remember it was my birthday, and I went to a party, and I had a nice fancy car. And literally, I just got all crazy because I was drunk, and just decided to just run all the stoplights as fast as I can with the car. 
and not even look at the road, actually look up and see if I can make it. And he, don't play with your life, man. Don't play with your life. Because you don't know when it's going to be taken away from you. Parties. What's the benefit? You want a party? Wait for Jannah. And we can have our own parties. Halal parties. Brothers can get together. Sisters can get together. It's nice, man. You can Something constructive. Something good can come out of it. Real relationship. Not that you're buddy, buddy, friend, I love you, and then you drink a few and you start killing each other and beating, you know, because he looked at your girl and then, come on, man. We know this happens too many times. Does it make sense? It makes no sense. It doesn't make sense. So why do we want to do that? We need to think also of these things and the benefits and the consequences. Opposite sex relationships, I mean, girls, boys, this is one of the hard ones. <laughs> we all know. It is probably one of the toughest ones. It's like, you know, Bob becomes Ahmed. He took Shahada, right? <laughs> and then Ahmed, I, literally, right? And then Ahmed's like, he's going, and Cindy comes, hey, Bob, how are you? And like hugs him, you know what I mean? I'm not even kidding you. In first university, I became, when I became Muslim, I was sitting, it was like literally like a week of Islam, sitting at a computer in the computer center. And with my friend next to me. And you know, mashallah, and brothers are practicing, right? And you've knew, and, I'm looking at uh, Bukhater, you know, some, they're showing me some videos. And all of a sudden, I feel from the back a nice, warm pair of hands hugging me. And a head laying against my head. And a nice voice saying, Gabriel, how are you? And I'm like, Ugh! I just like jumped, you know. And obviously, you got like the brothers next to you. And it took me a while to realize because I'm so used to that, right? It's just been a week, man. And I'm like, I'm like, kind of like, uh, oh, you know? And I, like, I pushed her, you know? She's like, oh, she didn't know I'm Muslim. She didn't see me for a while. And she's like, how are you? I'm like, uh, uh, you know, like this. And the brothers are looking at me. I'm all red like a lobster. <laughs> sir. And it's like, you know, like, it was embarrassing. Because you know? it's like so hard. And, you know, like, it's like girls, you know, like, especially in a lot of the cultures, People, when they see each other, they kiss each other on the cheeks, right? Boys and girls, and, or hug. And it's like, you know, you've been in there. You've been in that life. You know, you, you've gone to the parties. I used to, to break dance. You know, right? so it's like, you're there, and the people know you, or they, you know, they meet you after some time, and they think you're the same. And you faced with some, I remember, you know, with some weird, you know, things. I remember Sheikh Saeed Raga, if you know him, he said they went to, to a meeting with some lady, and the lady, like, after the end, he was, like, so nice, and the lady's like, here you go, you know, like, shake my hand. And he's like, no, I don't shake hand. He's like, okay, I'll just hug you. And she, like, hugged him. Right? And she's like, ah. Uh. Because he's like, no, I don't shake hand. He's like, okay, I'll just hug you. And she's like, just hugged him, you know. And subhanAllah, I mean, it's, it's tough, man. You know, it's tough, especially living in these environments. This is actually probably one of the toughest things that we have to deal with give it up how we do it sometimes the brothers you know shaking hands with like sisters or girls it's especially in the west everyone wants to shake your hand and sometimes the brothers back like, <coughs> like all kinds of techniques or like hold things in one brother's like you just have to hold a lot of books in your hand so your hands are full so no one will shake your hand you know different kind of things right and then you tell ladies like sorry i don't shake hands you know she's like why not? And you have to explain to her that we respect women and, you know, this is not, uh, you know, part of our... I mean, it's, it's tough. It's, imagine you go to an interview, huh? And whatever, this is, you know, the fiqh different, whatever. This, I'm just talking about... I, mean, I, I went to many interviews and the people are like, the women are like, hey. And I'm like, eee. <laughs> you know, like the first 10 minutes. So, alhamdulillah, it's da'wah. The first 15 minutes, I have to explain as to why I didn't shake her hand. That I respect her. That she's a woman. And in Islam, women are respected. And we are not from her family to, t to touch her. And that she's a princess, a flower. And we're not supposed to do that. And, you know, some people take it nicely. Some people are like, no, no, you have to shake my hand. <laughs> anyway, so this is a tough one. Type another one. But at the end of the day, listen. Any, 
if you refuse these kind of things, if you tell, people can be angry at you. It's okay, as long as Allah is happy with you. It doesn't matter. As the Prophet said, it doesn't matter who's angry. The whole world can be angry at Allah, as long as you are happy with me. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. Actually, subhanAllah, the people will begin to respect you. The people will say, this is a person who doesn't, he doesn't waver. He stands his ground. He believes. He stands up for what he believes. And I know many people like that, who are really respected. So, don't give in just because people might say this or that. The other thing is, brother and sister, committing to Islam. And this is a tough one. Okay, we've become Muslim. We have changed. We have come back to Islam. But what are we going to be? Just another body in this world? Alhamdulillah, mashallah, we have 1.6 billion Muslims. Almost. Still, we're not <laughs> doing too good. Because the Prophet said, you'll be like the foam on top of the water. Many in number, many, many in number. But no benefit. It's not, brothers, we need to understand, it's not the numbers, man. The quality. It's the quality of Islam that we're practicing. Committing to Islam. We need to commit. We can't just be a Muslim by Muslim, okay? We need to commit to Islam. We need to get involved in Islam. We need to live Islam. If we live Islam ourselves, we will be, we'll, it'll be a better world. If we can be good Muslims, understand Islam, we will be better people for our communities, for wherever we are. And committing to Islam is not easy. And we need to start, we need to start from our prayers, from our salawat. How many of us pray Fajr in the masjid? Or pray Fajr at all? Many masjid. In a square area of five kilometers where people can either drive, you know, two kilometers with their car, or walk, where there's at least 12,000 Muslims living, you have 12 people praying. I counted this morning, I was amazed. 12 people praying Salah, Fajr. How much is that out of 12,000? It's less than 1%, man. 0 0.001, something like that. Allah Akbar. In a Muslim country, you know, it's not good. Because this means you commit. Some people say, well, you know, it's not far to pray in the masjid. It's not about that. It's about our take on this. About our commitment. It's about the ajr of getting 27 times more of praying in, in the jama'ah. It's about getting the ajr of praying the whole night if you pray fajr and isha in the masjid. Praying qiyam the whole night. It's about... The, do we not need some ajr, man? Do you not want to get more than one salah, one reward? Are, you not, are we not in need of it? It's about commitment. How much do we value this? It's about how we arrange our lives that we will make sure that we go in s to sleep in time so we can wake up. It's about the commitment that we will schedule our life around the salawat, not the salawat around our life. This is what it is. We need to really think about this. It's important to start with the salah. If we fix our salah, inna salata tanhani al-fahshai wal-munkar, the salah will stop the fahshai and the munkar. The salah will make us better people. So the Prophet ﷺ give the mithal of the person who has a river and he bathes in it five times. Is there any dirt in him? No. This is the prayers. It will remove the sins. It will stop us. You'll feel shy, man. When at least, at least if you commit the sins, then every son of Adam, he, he makes sins. But you'll feel shy. You'll feel that you'll go back to the... You can't wait for the next prayer so you can make tawbah. So you can repent. It will change your thinking. Another thing of committing into Islam is the Muslim the Muslim identity. You know, the beard, the hijab, the practice, the many things. And I'm not saying this is what makes Islam necessarily. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that do this or do... I'm, I'm just trying to look at it from the perspective of understanding. Because today, it's a lot of people give these things up. 
And I'm, again, I'm not getting to fair of what and this and that. 